once again, if you're uh, joining us by radio, television, maybe you're watching us on the internet somewhere or another, well, of course, we're here at Old Bethel United Methodist Church, and of course, Brother Steve Kennedy, our pastor, you won't get to hear him today because he's under the weather this morning, but uh, we're excited about having Brother Buddy Wilshire back with us this morning. You may have had a chance to hear him a few weeks ago, and he's going to be filling in for Brother Steve this morning. So, Brother Buddy, we're glad you're here this morning and looking forward to the message. We're going to get back into our worship and song this morning. Our next hymn is hymn number 240, and it's Hark the Herald Angels Sing. At this time, we're going to have our affirmation of faith. I'm going to ask you to stand and join us this morning for our affirmation of faith. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is one true church, apostolic, universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father Almighty, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love, as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end. That is, the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. You may be seated. Our next song this morning is hymn number 234, O Come All Ye Faithful. Two hundred.
it's time now for our children's message, and if Miss Shelley will come on down and bring the kiddos, we'll have our children's message at this time. No, not Merry Christmas. Uh, Happy New Year's Eve. What's tomorrow? New Year's Day, starting a new year. It's a chance for us to all start over. Well, do any of y'all like superheroes? You like superheroes? Yes. Yes, I like superheroes. Jacob likes superheroes. He even has a Captain America backpack. And he's not even a kid anymore. Do you have a favorite superhero? No? No? Well, what are some powers that superheroes have? What can Superman do? He can fly. Can you fly? No, see, that's a superpower. Well, what weaknesses do superheroes have? Superman can't stand kryptonite. It makes him weak. Well, our Bible uh, verse for today comes from 2 Timothy 1.7. In our Bible passage, Paul was helping a special young man. He wasn't a superhero, but he had a special job to help a lot of people love, know, and serve Jesus well. His name was Timothy, and his job was to be a pastor. But he was afraid of all the responsibilities that came with the job. In fact, he got himself so nervous that he was having tummy troubles. That's happened to me before. Paul wrote these words to help Timothy remember the special powers that God gave him. Second Timothy 1 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Well, now I need that sound mind part because sometimes my mind doesn't work real good. I can't remember anything anymore. How do you think remembering that God has given him power, love, and self-discipline helped Timothy overcome his fear? Don't you think it made him less fearful? Can God's love, power, and self-discipline help us overcome things we fear? It's great to know that God has given us supernatural powers so we can battle the things we fear. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for the powers you give us. We don't need to ever be afraid because of the power, love, and self-discipline you give us. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, if our ushers will come and receive this morning's regular offering, and that'll be followed by our building fund offering.
I've been informed that we've got a special request this morning. If you'll have to get your Cokesbury hymnal out, and it'll be in the back of the book, and it's called Beautiful Star of Bethlehem. This time we're going to turn it over to Brother Buddy for this morning's message. And if you happen to uh, get a chance to come worship with us here at Old Bethel, we'd love to have you. Don't forget our services start at 930 with a worship service on Sunday morning. This time we'll turn it over to Brother Buddy. Thanks, Jack. Thank you, sir. Well, to... Uh, Quote Gomer Powell, surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> and if you're surprised, so am I. Uh, actually, yesterday morning, I was, uh, I was running some errands. I was actually headed down to uh, Salvation Army uh, with a load of year-end donations for that uh, tax deduction. And the phone rang, and it was Peggy, and uh, she said that Brother Nathan Hodum had called and I uh, thought he had the flu and was wondering if I might be able to fill in at Golden for him. And then uh, later on in the afternoon, I mean late, late in the afternoon, uh, Angie Kennedy called me and said that Steve had not been out of bed all day long and was wondering if I might be able to come to Old Bethel. So uh, I hope all of you have been able to avoid all the sickness that's going around, the flu and and the stomach bugs and the, uh, uh, the colds and just the, the general bad feelings. Uh, I hope all of you have been able to avoid it. Uh, but if you've not, I, I'm glad that you've bounced back. And uh, I hope that you can avoid it uh, from now on. I also want to uh, uh, tell you, I hope everyone has had a uh, happy uh, Merry Christmas. And uh, uh, look forward to a brand new year. Scripture today that I want to use, and uh, I, I do want to uh, remind you that uh, this was put together pretty quick yesterday or last night and actually finished up a little bit this morning. 
Uh, so uh, I'm, I, ho- I hope that uh, God's going to be glorified and he'll just speak through me in spite of me. But the scripture I want to use today is uh, from the book of James. And James is one of those books that, uh, of the New Testament that I think is often uh, uh, overlooked. Usually when we think about New Testament readings, we think about the, the Gospels or Acts or uh, even for some of you who really enjoy studying maybe Revelation. But uh, James is a, a, a very good book. There's a lot of wisdom uh, in this book. So if you would, um, uh, it'll be a few minutes before I get to any uh, scripture readings, but if you could find James, it's a a short uh, book, so it'll be easy to find when I get to it. As we anticipate uh, beginning a new year, I think it's always a good thing to look back over the last year um, and think about what was good about 2017, both in your own life Um, and in the life of your church here at Old Bethel. And then also, what was challenging? What what problems did you have to face and overcome, uh, both in your own lives and here at church? Reflect on that for a moment. And I want to ask you a question. Did you grow through this? And I'm not talking about, uh, are there more people in the pews today than, than there were a year ago? Uh, I'm I'm talking about did you grow personally and spiritually in in your walk with the Lord? And also, did you help someone else along their journey and their walk with the Lord? When I think about my own life and in in the past year, I I feel like there are some areas where, yes, I did uh, did grow, and and maybe I'm doing a little more to please God than than I was, but then I look back in other areas, and it seems like I'm struggling just as badly as I ever have. Um, For example, each morning uh, I pray before I ever get out of bed, before my feet hit the floor, I I, I try to pray each morning. And each morning I ask God just to use me however he may see fit to do so. But then he provides an opportunity like this morning uh, to get up here and speak. And I tried my best yesterday to figure out a way uh, to say no. I had a lot of things going on. I knew that uh, I didn't have a thing prepared, and you'll know that uh, after I finish speaking probably. Um, I knew I had a full afternoon of things that I needed to be doing, so it would be late before I could even take a look at it. So I hesitated. Brother, Like I said, Brother Nathan had called Peggy and told her that uh, he was sick and wanted to know if I could fill in. So my first response was, I wish he would find somebody else. And I want to ask, does that sound like uh, somebody who has grown over the past 12 months? It, it, it sure doesn't to me. I've been a lay speaker now for a number of years. Um, matter of fact, I took my first class at Wood Junior College. That's how long it's been. Some of you may remember Wood, and it's been closed for a number of years now. Um, one of the, the first things that, uh, that I was told during that class was a good lay speaker will always have a sermon prepared and ready to use. And like I told Larry earlier, I found out over the years that I'm just not a good lay speaker because I've been caught without one many, many times. Uh, but yesterday, I, 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 you know, I didn't have time really to come up with something. I, I really, and I think most of us, if we're called to do something, we'd like a little bit of time to prepare. But I didn't have that yesterday, and I had other, another excuse. I, I'm in a Sunday school class that I help lead, and uh, I didn't have anybody lined up to help with that. Um, there were other, other uh, excuses and reasons that I could have come up with, but... Um, uh, that's all they were, were excuses. Like I said, God provides an opportunity, and I asked for that opportunity when I prayed, Lord, just use me however uh, you see fit to use me. And then I hesitated. I wanted to pass it off to someone else. So I want to ask, how many times do you think this happens to other people who call themselves Christian? Uh, we talk about serving God, and then when he gives us an opportunity to do something for him, we look for an excuse, a reason that we can't. Can we find somebody else to do it? 
Maybe you're not called to speak from the pulpit. Maybe you are. Uh, but if you're not, think about some of the other uh, chances that you get to serve. Uh, and then think about what is your response. Do you hesitate maybe uh, when you have the chance to speak to somebody at, at work or at school, uh, tell them about what God's doing in your life? Do you hesitate for a minute to, to share what's going on in your life? Uh, if somebody asks you to teach a Sunday school class, do you willingly do that? Or do you try to find somebody else maybe that will do it for you? Maybe if somebody asks you to help with uh, vacation Bible school or to help uh, provide funds for a mission trip or to work uh, on doing something else for, for the church, what's your response to that? Have you tried to find a reason that you can't serve God? Well, I know I'm guilty of that several times. Now, we're approaching a new year, and I'm not real big on New Year's resolutions, uh, mostly because it seems like I just can't keep them. Uh, it seems like it's the same ones every year. I need to lose some weight, get more exercise, uh, eat better, eat less, uh, manage my money better. A lot of different resolutions and a lot of reasons that I can't keep them. But what if 2018... It's the year that we resolve to say yes to what God is asking of us. A lot of times when we start thinking about things that we need to change about ourselves, we think about what we need to stop doing. And there are usually plenty of things that we do need to stop doing. And uh, I'm sure you've got yours. I know I've got mine. We won't go into them right now. But then there's also what, uh, what's known or what's called the sin of omission. Sins of omission. I wonder if God possibly gets more upset with us over this than he does the things that we need to stop doing. Um, I know that I get more upset, I think, with my own children when I tell them to do something and it doesn't get done than I do when they've done something maybe that they shouldn't have. And I also think I get even more upset when, with them when maybe I don't necessarily tell them to do something, but there's something that just seems to me to be so obvious that they need to do, and they ignore it. Uh, maybe just something as minor as uh, going into the kitchen several times and there being some dirty dishes in the sink, and nobody takes time to wash them and put them away or at least put them in the dishwasher. Something just very trivial like that. Um, yeah, that, that, that is very minor, and uh, maybe that's something that God is working on me for 2018, is to, uh, to not get upset over little things like that. But I want to use that just to illustrate how easy it is to overlook, overlook the things that need doing. Sometimes in our own homes, maybe in our communities, uh, in our families, and sometimes in our churches as well. Think about all the little things that need to be done in those areas, in our homes, in our community, in our families, and in our churches. And now think about what you or what I might be able to do uh, about them if only we would get up and do something about them. A lot of times we'll hear these little things referred to as the low-hanging fruit. These are the easy things that uh, someone could do if only they'd go to the trouble of doing it. Uh, things that collectively, a lot of small things, could make a big difference if they were all done. Maybe in 2018, God is not calling you to climb to the top of the tree uh, to pick that fruit. He may be, and if he is, you better do it. But it's very possible he's telling you just to look around, open your eyes, at all the small things that need to be done. The low-hanging fruit. Not just to look, but to do something about it. Pray about it, of course, and then do something. You know the line from the song, it only takes a spark to get a fire going? That's true, and you can be that spark. The first uh, passage I want to read to you this morning, or I want you to read with me if you've got your Bibles open, is James chapter 1 beginning with verse 22 and going through 25. And uh, I think this is something most of us have heard. Beginning in verse 22, 
but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into perfect law of liberty and continues in it is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. So I'm hoping for a blessed 2018 for you and for me. But, you know, we can hope for a lot of things, and maybe they'll happen. Or we can work for them and make sure that they happen. A very wise man, I'm not going to call him by name, but he's sitting right back there, and he used to have a whistle in his mouth a lot. I heard him say one time that there's three kinds of people in the world. There's those who make things happen, there's those who let things happen, and then there are those who one day wake up and look around and wonder what in the world happened. What kind of person are you? James chapter 2, verses 14 through 24. It says, What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you not, do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith and my, by my works. You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works, and by works faith was made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. Friends, are there things God's telling you to do that you haven't been doing? Maybe there's some of you, some things here at the church Uh, that need your gifts, need your efforts, uh, your skills to make it happen. Maybe there's some things that need to be fixed in your family life or in a relationship with another person, and you need to take the first step to make it happen. Perhaps there's something going on in your life that is personal, but it's a stumbling block between you and God keep you from being as close to him as you need to be. I reflect, I I urge you to reflect on all these things as 2017 closes out and we begin a brand new year tomorrow morning. James chapter 4 verse 14 reads, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for it is your life, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. So I'm begging you, please don't put off anything that God's telling you to do. We might not have another opportunity to do it. And just as we pray to be given these opportunities, we also have to pray for a receptive heart, receptive spirit, an eagerness to do what, to do what we're being called to do, to serve where we're called to serve, to be Jesus to those that are around us right here in our own little part of the world. And then finally, the last scripture I'd like to read to you is also from James chapter 4, and it's verse 17. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. Friends, I don't want you or me or any of us to be living in sin. If there's something, a need that needs to be done, I would urge you to look around, to open your eyes, and to, uh, to take on the challenge. You be that spark. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, I thank you for 2017 and for years past. Um, Lord, you've been really good to us. You've blessed us so richly. Father, I forget, uh, ask for your forgiveness for not being obedient, not doing the things that, uh, that I know should have been done, for willingly being disobedient, and Lord, being negligent in other areas. Lord, I just ask that you would open our eyes to see the needs of your people. Father, I ask for courage, uh, for willingness, and for strength whenever there's an opportunity to serve you. Lord, I pray that you would help each and every one of us to look for the little things around us that can be done uh, to make your kingdom better. And Father, help us just to do it with a servant's heart and a, a willing attitude. Uh, Lord, not that we would be glorified at all, but that you would be honored and glorified in all things. Lord, I ask these things in your precious name. Amen. And now I want to wish each and every one of you a happy new year and a blessed new year. Thanks again for the opportunity. Jack, I'll turn it over to you now. Our closing hymn is hymn number 217. It's called Away in a Manger. to our benediction prayer. Amen.